The following program was made possible by the generosity of those who have determined to hold fast to the true Roman Catholic religion, as expounded by the Roman Catholic Church before the disasters of Vatican II and the so-called New Mass. This is Father William Jenkins, the priest in charge at our Immaculate Conception Church in Norwood, Ohio. I'm a priest of the Society of St. Pius V. Recently, I did a program on the apologetics question of whether the Bible alone contains all of God's revelation. This was a claim of Martin Luther and has been a claim of Protestants ever since, that Scripture alone is sufficient for salvation because it contains all that God has revealed to us necessary for our salvation. Now, in that long program, I looked at that from the question, that proposition from the question of the internal evidence and the external evidence. That is the situation of the world regarding the capacity of people to receive uh, written information, those who could not read, those who could not have books, and so on. And also looked at the difficulties of producing books, uh, and the question of the fallibility of the production of books at every step in the process of that production. Unless there is, of course, an external authority to the Bible, an authority that was established by Christ to judge, and to not only tell us that a book that claims to be the sacred scriptures, faithfully reproduced, is indeed accurate, and also an authority that was given to us by our Lord Jesus Christ that can authoritatively tell us that the interpretation of the scriptures is indeed accurate. Now, the external evidence that I mentioned to you had to do with these factors uh, that were outside of the Bible itself. But there's the internal evidence of the Bible also. I mentioned a number of things. Some of the statements made in sacred scripture itself, indicating that the scriptures were not sufficient unto themselves, do not contain all that Christ revealed, all that God has revealed to us, but also the 40 days period from the resurrection of our Lord to his ascension, and that very little of that is recorded anywhere in sacred scripture, and yet that is all important information revealed by God for the church itself. And I mentioned that this information, while not written in sacred scripture, is contained in sacred tradition. It has been preserved for us through the ages in the church, because the church came first. Before any, any book of the New Testament was written, the church was already living, thriving, growing, and saving souls. Now, since then, a question has come in, and that is what this program is about, Brief as it is, the program will address the question, can you deny that the Catholic Church tried to prevent the people from reading the Bible by chaining it up, both literally by chains and figuratively by keeping sacred scripture in Latin and out of the vulgar tongue so that people could not read it? Well, this is a good question, uh, but I believe there's a very good answer to it. Uh, the fact is that the church did not keep the, the people from reading the Bible. If anything would have kept the people from reading the Bible, it would have been the, the lack of copies of the Bible until the inventing of the printing press, to the lack of uh, actual Bibles available uh, for the first 1,400 years or so after Christ established the church. But also the fact that the vast majority of people could not read and uh, that would have been an impediment that would have kept people from reading the Bible. That's a matter of historical uh, fact, though. It's not a matter of the church's decision. It's what the church had to deal with. Uh, the fact is, though, that even though most people could not read or write, those who could read the educated classes read Latin. And they read Latin, whether they were born in what is now France, or whether they were born in what is now Germany, or whether they were born in England or Italy, or any, any of these countries of Europe, they, they, if they were educated, read Latin. And that is why the Gutenberg Bible 
produced in the middle of the 1400s with the invention of the printing press. By the way, it is the first book that was printed on the newly invented printing press. It was printed in Latin. It used the Vulgate version of the Bible. It was called the Vulgate because when it was, that translation was produced by St. Jerome, it was the tongue of the common people. People read Latin. That was the common tongue in those days. And even in the times of uh, Johannes Gutenberg and the invention of his printing press, Latin was the common language of the educated classes. If they could read, they could read Latin. And so uh, that is why the Bible was produced in that tongue, because it was available for those who could read, accessible to those, comprehensible to those who could read. And if you look at the uh, scholarly writings of the, even in the sciences, uh, uh, the great scientists of this period of time, uh, the late medieval period into the Renaissance period, uh, they wrote in Latin. Why? Well, because their works could be read uh, by well-educated people in, in all of the countries of Europe who had been through the university system, which was actually established by the church uh, beginning in the incipient Middle Ages. And so uh, that was the universal tongue even then for science, uh, theology, and uh, philosophy, and so on. It was considered to be the most noble tongue um, because it was not a, a, a living language and in the sense that it was a, uh, a language that was subject to continual change. And whenever a language is used in the vulgar tongue, on the streets, it, the terminology is continually changing its meaning. But Latin was fixed in its meaning, and that made it ideal for the conveying of eternal truths. As G.K. Chesterton said, the difference between uh, the Latin and the modern languages, or the common languages, is not the difference between a dead language and a living language. Rather, he said, the difference between the modern languages and Latin is the difference between a dying language and an immortal language. And so that immortal language of Latin was looked upon as being ideal for the conveyance of eternal truth and sacred scriptures. Now, uh, also, so many of the fathers had commented on the sacred scriptures writing in the Latin language. It seemed perfectly normal and right and even necessary to keep the, the Latin tongue of the scriptures. Uh, for the educated classes who would, in fact, be able to access the writings of the fathers in their commentaries. Now, the church did try to prevent people from profaning the Bible, precisely because the church saw it as sacred scripture. And uh, the church wanted to respect the holiness of the Bible and uh, prevent it from being treated with greater reverence by being profane, by rendering it in the profane tongue. However, as I mentioned to you, uh, even in producing it in Latin, the church saw that it was accessible to the people to read. Did the church actually chain down the Bible? Well, it's very possible. I don't know of any instances. Uh, I don't know that Luther, who was claiming, or his followers who were claiming that the church kept the Bible as chained up, uh, I don't know of any particular instances that they brought forth as evidence for their claim. Nonetheless, it seems very, very reasonable to expect that if they had a, a rare, a very rare book uh, that had been for centuries copied by hand, laboriously copied over lifetimes of monks, that these books, so rare and so precious, illuminated so beautifully, would not be simply left out on the shelf for anyone to take, manhandle, uh, or abuse. Um, even when we walk into, into banks these days, we find that pens are chained up, and not to keep them from being used, but to make sure that they are there to be used, and that they don't disappear. And it's a, maybe a small example, or a, but nonetheless, when you have a very valuable item, but you want to make it available for the people, accessible to the people, you do something to secure it, to prevent it from being stolen or destroyed. 
If the church chained a Bible at any time, it was to prevent it from being stolen. It was to prevent it from being destroyed. It was to prevent it from disappearing. But all for the sake of making it available to those who could read it. So this argument that the church actually kept the Bible in Latin uh, to prevent it from being read is nonsense. And the question of whether or not the church actually used physical chains to secure the Bible, well, again, this is because the church considered this to be not only a, a rare piece of literature and a valuable book, but a sacred book. And the church's mission was to protect that. As she often risked life and limb of her children becoming martyrs to protect the integrity of the sacred scriptures. Protestants, who so willingly criticize the church, uh, do not have the capacity to understand the scriptures, but only to debate the true meaning of the scriptures, because they do not have any authority they recognize here on earth that was established here by Christ to, in order to tell them exactly what the scriptures mean. This is the next topic of uh, the apologetics session coming up here, and that is, what does the tradition of the church tell us, and uh, why it is so valuable, and why are the modernists now trying to do what the Protestants did 500 years ago, and that is, tear the church away from her moorings in sacred tradition. May God bless you.